Hello everyone, I'm William Brent of the Power for All campaign. We're joined in conversation by Abhishek Jain of the Council of Energy, Environment and Water, more commonly known as CEEW, where Abhishek heads up the work on energy access. He also co-conceptualized and leads CEEW's flagship access project, the largest longitudinal survey of its kind on energy access. Most recently, he co-authored a new report, Clean Energy Innovations to Boost Rural Incomes. Thanks, Abhishek, for joining us. Thank you for having me, William. Yeah, so this new report, which focuses on India, really looks at, uh, as the title alludes to, how to boost rural incomes through uh, innovation uh, in clean energy. And it, it, it's very clear from the report that there's a huge opportunity worth $50 billion by your estimate for clean energy powered livelihood appliances in India. And so I, I'm wondering if you can help to contextualize that a little bit, uh, you know, explain to us over what period of time uh, that $50 billion potential market is, uh, is uh, ready to be tapped. And then also curious if you could explain a little bit about some of the, the top appliances um, that really came through in that report and why the opportunity for them is so large right now. Yeah. Thanks, William. I think that's a very interesting question, especially when you ask like, oh, what time period uh, such opportunity can be tapped? And that uh, goes to the essence of the report, because uh, if you see what is happening right now, there is hardly um, any significant innovations as we have outlined in the report. We only could find 20 odd innovations, clean energy innovations, which can uh, adequately run productive use loads uh, or livelihood activities in rural India. Uh, and even among those 20 odd appliances, the deployment remains very, very small, uh, at best in hundreds. The only exception being solar pumps, which have been supported by Indian government and have now reached about 200,000 number. Uh, so the question around how soon can we tap this market is a lot dependent on how India's innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem takes on to this opportunity. And the idea of this report was to highlight that yes, there exists a massive opportunity and if we can put our force behind uh, the innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. I'm sure that in coming 10 to 15 years, we can easily uh, tap into this market. But if we don't put our force behind that innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem, this market may just remain unrealized for many more years. Uh, talking about some of the drivers or let's say the top appliances which have uh, led to such a large opportunity. And mind you, this $50 billion doesn't even include uh, one major technology, which is solar pumps, which itself has a market as per our estimate, close to $30 billion. And the reason why we did not include that into this estimate was uh, we are already seeing some traction with solar pumps, but not with many other potential technologies. Uh, and uh, one of the main driver is the large population base that the India has and the large farmer base that India has. So farm sector itself contributes almost, uh, I would say, close to 75% of this entire market. Uh, given we have 119 million farms uh, and still the mechanization in the farm sector in India is pretty low. It's uh, just to compare it with China, it's one third of the China in terms of power availability in the farms. So there is a significant opportunity in the farm sector. And this, I would still say, is just tip of the iceberg. Uh, we are not estimating any uh, market potential which is uh, latent uh, in nature today, which means that enterprises which are not existing today because of lack of energy access, which can tomorrow exist, once energy access, no one remains a challenge. So yeah, uh, that's where I would stop. It's fascinating. And, and is, the, is the current support from uh, the public and private sector where it needs to be in terms, to, in terms of, of tapping the opportunity? What needs to happen from a public-private support uh, perspective? Uh, two main things, we need to focus on bringing more <clears throat> ideas into prototypes and demonstrative uh, technologies. So we need to work on early stage ideas uh, with young innovative minds, uh, be it in public institutions, be it in uh, innovation labs uh, across the country. But secondly and more importantly, we need to work on bringing the mature technologies into the market. And we believe that commercial pilots are one approach, uh, one critical pathway through which we can bring a lot of these technologies into the market. And we need to support enterprises both in form of capital as well as non-capital support uh, to undertake such commercial pilots to generate sufficient evidence for investors, for financiers, as well as policymakers to then latch onto these opportunities and um, bring them to scale. Yeah. You mentioned that, uh, you know, the Indian economy is still quite uh, agriculturally focused. It's a, it's a big part of the economy. 
Yet, uh, according to the new report, 4.4 uh, million rural microenterprises say that they lack reliable power supply and that that's their biggest business obstacle. So how does, how does India fix that? And what role do appliances powered by distributed renewables have to play in, in that solution? Yeah. So uh, it's interesting that you said like Indian economy is uh, still reliant largely on agriculture. The uh, fact of the matter is, if you look at the economic value addition, uh, agriculture is now playing uh, a role which is substantially smaller. Uh, only about 14 to 17 percent of our GDP actually comes from agriculture. But at the same time, in terms of livelihoods, it support more than half of India's population. So that's where the challenge lies, and that's where there's a significant opportunity for non-farm livelihoods and these rural micro enterprises that you talked about are actually categorized as non-farm enterprises in the rural areas which are anywhere between uh, let's say doing custom tailoring to uh, spinning off uh, pottery views to uh, carpentry to uh, all such activities which uh, need to happen in a rural economy uh, and interestingly uh, out of the total 34 um, million micro enterprises that we have in a country as many as 4.4 million mention energy access, lack of reliable electricity supply as a bottleneck. And this is when they were asked an open-ended question like what is the biggest bottleneck to their business? I'm sure many more are still getting hurt by the challenge of electricity supply. And the way I see uh, this can be fixed is by focusing on energy efficiency along with energy provision. So while government is trying to improve grid supply situation, extend the grid in many areas, we need to complement with this this grid extension with decent price solutions, along with energy efficient appliances which can run productive uh, loads. What is happening currently in the country because you have subsidized flat power, unreliable electricity, most of the livelihood appliances in rural areas are designed for them, and hence they do not consider energy efficiency as their design criteria. We need to change that through creating new incentive structures on that front. So. Energy efficiency then is critical, yet many of the appliances on the market today consume far too much energy to be powered by smaller distributed renewable systems. Um, so, you know, you need, we need some radical improvements in technology efficiency to solve that issue, I'm assuming. Um, what else besides technology innovation is needed? Yeah. Uh, so I would say, like, even to do technology innovation, we need to create right incentives in the market. Right now, uh, as I said, like if you have subsidized flat price electricity, which is unreliable in nature, there is very little incentive for an innovator to innovate for energy efficient technology, little incentive for a manufacturer to manufacture energy efficient technology, and little you know, uh, incentive for distributor to distribute them and consumer to ask for them. So unless we uh, challenge some of these existing regimes of unsubsidized or heavily subsidized uh, and flat price electricity, it's difficult to create these incentive structures. But at the same time, there are opportunities uh, in terms of replacing diesel to start with for many of these activities which are currently running on diesel, which can be powered quite cost effectively even today on decentralized renewables if we focus on energy efficiency. Uh, so apart from uh, tech innovation, which of course is needed, we need to focus on creating right incentive structures for people to demand energy efficient appliances at the last mile. Uh, and we need to work with all these value chain people, manufacturers, distributors, innovators to ultimately solve this. Thanks, Abhishek. So um, most of the people that I come across in Power for All is working with these days um, refer to uh, the types of applications we're discussing as productive use appliances. I noticed that in this new report from CEW that you use instead livelihood appliances or livelihood activities. And I'm wondering within the, why you made that choice? What's the, the reason for one over the other? Yeah, I must say that's a quite a keen observation at your end and I'm glad that you have asked that question. Uh, so the reason for us to use uh, livelihood appliances instead of productive use appliances was to break away from the cocoon that I feel we have started creating within the energy access space. Uh, the, the term productive use that we use is uh, so much a jargon within the energy access folks that outside energy access people, when we talk to uh, broader stakeholders, be it corporate, be it industry, be it policy makers, productive use is not understood as a term at all. And that's why we wanted to use more mainstream language, which other people can relate to, because unlike the problem of household energy access, if you want to solve the problem of 
energy access for livelihood activities for income generating activities we need to work with existing industry structures existing uh, ministry structures existing bureaucracy structures which are aligned which have aligned themselves across different uh, structures of economy be it dairy industry be it textile industry be it uh, i would say animal husbandry industry uh, be it fishery industry and so on so we want to use their language to make this idea mainstream rather than just something which uh, folks from the energy access world understand and relate to interesting and do you think uh, that it's received a better reception uh, in india because of that uh, distinction that you're making uh, so far we have uh, i would say started testing the water because we have uh, started the outreach around the report uh, but certainly uh, when it comes to corporates when it comes to industry as well as when it comes to policy makers who are broadly interested in economy rural economy rural development these are far more relatable terms they do not cross question or ask uh, clarification questions whereas if you use terms like productive use uh, that always uh, leaves a room for uh, a cross question or a clarification that what does that mean fascinating so um thank you so much abhishek these are really important uh, topics that we're discussing and really appreciate the work that cew is doing on this i want to mention also that uh, CEW and Abhishek's team will be coming out with the uh, most, uh, the newest version of the access report uh, in November. Is that right, Abhishek? Yes, we are releasing it on 21st November. Yes, and also if uh, any of the listeners want to learn more about the work that CEW is doing, you can visit their website at cew.in. Um, and with that, Abhishek, I'll thank you once again. It's really always a pleasure to, uh, to talk to you and we'll look forward to seeing more great stuff from CEW soon. Yeah. Thank you, William. Thanks for having me today.